Hey guys, this is Carbon Owl and welcome back to another video. Today I want to share with you my experience and opinion about what I think is one of the greatest indie games of the last decade, Terraria. I've spent a lot of the last year learning the ins and outs of this game, and there are a lot of them, and battling the crazy bosses until my fingers were numb. This game's had me rage quitting and coming back with new ideas more times than I can count, and I've enjoyed almost every minute of it, and my goal here is to show you why you should try it too. Terraria is a 2D sandbox game with gameplay that revolves around exploration, building, crafting, combat, survival, and mining. It's playable both in solo and multiplayer modes so you can go in guns blazing by yourself or team up with some buddies and take on the challenges of Terraria together. It focuses on progression through killing the bosses in the game which are unlocked as you explore and power up your character. Terraria's depth of crafting is one of the main reasons that people still play this game despite it being a decade old. But that's not all this game offers. And here are 5 more reasons why I think Terraria is a fantastic game and why you should try it. One of my favorite systems of Terraria are the item trees and farming for items that you need to build stronger and better equipment, weapons, and other goodies. Now I know what you're gonna say, come on, you like farming? But farming in this game really feels rewarding, and oftentimes you get items that you don't even intend on getting. One of the most common ways to play is also to create farms and grind out the top tier gear before taking on another boss. And what's even better is that most of the items that you will be getting uh, will eventually be used for something else later in the game. That's why the number one rule in Terraria is never ever ever throw anything out. Go store it in one of your thousand chests that you found in your adventure. One example of this is the endgame sword Zenith, which is made by combining swords from the start, middle, and end game to create an overpowered weapon that will tear all of the bosses to shreds. One of my favorite qualities is that Terraria progresses naturally with your actions. It's built so that when you reach a milestone in the world, whether it's finding your very first treasure chest or getting 100 health, a new part of the world becomes available for you to explore. When you eventually get to exploring that part, another part becomes available, then another and another until you're smack dab in the middle of the battle with the Moon Lord and you can't remember how you got there. This natural progression is sometimes interrupted by the odd items you need to farm to power for yourself up, but most of the time you'll realize that you've already found the items that you need for your shiny power up. And this is when I will remind you for the second time, do not throw anything away. Generally, you start the early part of the game by creating a base, exploring dungeons, and making yourself a elevator. This is an elevator from the overworld where you're going to be uh, starting to the underworld. Once this is complete, you'll likely be diving into boss fights, which reward you with the best loot in the game. A huge change comes when you fight the boss called the Wall of Flesh. This monstrosity, assuming you defeat it, will enable a permanent change in the world called Hard Mode. Enemies will get a lot stronger, and new events and bosses will be unlocked. This is when things get serious. You will not only have more challenges, but the rewards will be so much better. If you end up killing the three mechanical bosses, Plantera, Gollum, and Lunatic Cultist, you will unlock the end game of Terraria. In this stage, four celestial pillars will appear, which you have to defeat to unlock the last boss, the Moon Lord. This behemoth will put all of your power-ups, experience, blood, sweat, and tears to the test. Beat this boss and you'll truly be the master of Terraria, except that now you'll want to do it all over again in harder difficulty modes. But we'll get to that later. The boss fights and events are undoubtedly the heart of Terraria. This is the reason that you play the game and the most entertaining part of the entire experience. Bosses range from the measly King Slime all the way up to the Moon Lord and they're fought at different stages of the game. Every boss has a unique mechanic that you'll need to learn before fighting them and this makes the fights engaging and refreshing. Sprinkled in between all of the boss fights are events such as the Goblin Army or Pirate Invasions, a really cool Christmas themed invasion called Frost Moon or Martian Madness. These invasions lighten the mood and keep things entertaining while you're preparing for your fights against the bosses. They often have loot of their own which will help you in your playthrough and sometimes give you weapons or armor to help you with the boss fights. For example, one of the best mounts in the game from the, is from the pirate invasion. It gives you unlimited flight time and is super fast which helped me kill some of the tougher bosses. 
The events and boss fights are honestly what I remember most about Terraria, and if I could recommend this game for one thing, it would definitely be these aspects. Next is the concept of houses, village development, and NPCs. Houses in Terraria take many forms from small huts to gigantic castles, all built by you. You'll likely start off in a small hut and make your way to larger and larger houses as you progress. In addition to house for yourself, you'll need to make housing for all the NPCs that you find in the world. Now you don't need to do this, but these NPCs provide you with critical items that you need to progress the game. In addition to making houses for these NPCs, you also need to make sure that they're in the biome of their liking and they're th that they're with other NPCs that they like. Yes, they are extremely picky, but get this right and you'll find yourself being able to buy items from them at lower costs and the opportunity to get pylons, which make traveling around your world much, much easier. Speaking of NPCs, there are 29 of them and all of them have their place in the world of Terraria and your adventure. Be sure to get to know what they offer as they may come in handy as you progress. And finally, the support and community involvement in this game is tremendous. This can be seen all over the Steam reviews and on the Terraria wiki. The wiki is an amazing thing that you will absolutely need while you play this game. It will be your guide from your very first ball and star all the way to creating Zenith with all of your end game gear. This is a fantastic resource and with all of the items that you'll be getting, you will need it to help you discover what the items are and what they can be used for. It will also be a valuable resource for you when you think there is nothing to do in the game. I've often opened up the wiki to discover if I do one small thing, I can unlock an entirely new section of the game. So definitely look out for this in your adventure. This is an amazing game and one you should definitely add to your list to try out if you have it. I highly encourage you to check out Terraria on Steam, and if you do, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Thanks for watching this review, and I will see you guys in the next video.